In this video, you're going to learn when it is the right time to replace your running shoes instead of following the advice from shoe companies. So I've recently just purchased two new pairs of running shoes. I've gone with the ASICS um, Flight Foam 22s and I've got another pair of minimalist shoes that are on their way. Um, when that gets delivered, I think I might do another video on how to transition shoes safely, um, but I'll wait for them to get here. But in the meantime, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do a video on uh, uncovering when the right time is to buy new running shoes. And a lot of this advice I'm giving out today is usually just my interpretation and my advice, but I'd like to hear from you as well. Comment below, how long have you had your running shoes for? How long does it usually take before you have to replace your shoes? Or like what sort of metrics or ideas do you have about when it's time to change and get a new pair of shoes? I'm a bit skeptical sometimes because I know that the advice that's out there comes from running shoe companies and they're in the business of you buying shoes. Their business and companies, they thrive off you buying more shoes. And so I'm always a little bit skeptical. And there are three common pieces of advice uh, or three common guidelines that I see running shoe companies make when it comes to buying shoes. So we're gonna cover those. I'm gonna discuss why I think they're not that accurate. And then I'm gonna come up with my three pieces of advice that you should probably follow. The first guideline I usually hear, which we can dismiss straight away, is like time-based, like you should replace your shoes every six months, or you should replace your shoes every 12 months, something that's time-based. Like I said, we can dismiss this really quickly because this has no information, not enough information to make that decision because it depends how often you use them and a lot of other factors. Um, I could have a pair of shoes for six months and run 400 kilometers in them when someone else can have the same pair of shoes for six months and run 4,000 kilometers in them. And so they will obviously wear out a lot quicker and replace them a lot quicker. So not enough information is required. So let's move on to the next one. The second guideline we have contains more information, which is usually uh, to replace your shoes via like a distance or a mileage. So we usually hear replace your shoes every 400 miles or every 500 or 600 kilometers. And this is definitely more accurate than the first statement that we made, but in my opinion, still lacks some crucial information in regards to how long a shoe might last for. And yes, mileage is important, but shoe material, like sometime we have quite a thick hard sole that's going to take quite a while to sort of wear out when you have, compare that to something with a really thin sort of shoe that doesn't have a lot of substance, doesn't have a lot of um, longevity, you could say. Other things like running surface, could be tan track, could be gravel, could be road, could be trail. All of these things have a, an influence on the longevity of a certain shoe. Uh, your running technique, if you're a heel striker, if you're a midfoot striker, this is information as well. How heavy a runner is, like if you're 10, 15 kilos heavier and you're hitting the ground and impacting and kind of skidding on the ground with a higher ground reaction force, that theoretically could wear out a shoe a lot quicker. So several things will alter the wear and tear and the rate of the wear and tear. And so this advice of replacing your shoes every 400 miles, while more accurate, and yes, it can be a rough guideline, still, in my opinion, doesn't contain enough information. A bit of a story to help illustrate my point. I love these Innovate shoes. I uh, initially bought these years ago, and at the time I purchased these, they were, my normal running surface was like loose gravel, like stones and rocks and things like that. And I was also running with a midfoot contact and had a fairly aggressive crossover um, technique. So considering the wear of the shoe, considering the properties of the shoe, considering the gravel and the surface that I was running on and considering my running technique, all of those things meant that the sole of the shoe would wear out really quickly. And within six months, I had a hole on the inside underneath my fifth toe and had to replace them in six months. Fast forward, I bought the exact same pair and changed those things. I widened my step width. I changed my running surface um, to more of just footpaths. And these shoes now have lasted me about four years. So going from six months to four years, same shoe, the only thing that changed was the running surface and my running technique slightly, and that significantly influenced the last of these shoes. 
The third guideline I see is you should start replacing your shoes when it loses its cushioning. And the theory being that once it's lost its sponginess or it's lost its um, cushion under the heel, you're more likely to increase the ground reaction force as you strike the ground. And therefore, theoretically, it will increase your likelihood of injury. Now, there was a paper done by Kong and colleagues. They It was the first paper of their kind with a longitudinal study looking at new and old shoes. They assigned 15 males and 15 females, and they separate into three groups, air cushioned soles, gel cushioned, and spring cushioned underneath the heel, those sort of properties. And they analyzed these runners with the new shoes and also followed them and retested them after 200 miles of running in those shoes. They looked at their running mechanics um, before and after with new and the same shoes, but just when they had 200 miles in them. And they found that the amount of external force was consistent throughout the entire time. Even when the cushioning sort of started losing its sponge, the external loads were quite consistent. And the body does this and the runners unconsciously started running a bit differently to maintain those external loads. So they quoted in this paper, this study demonstrated that running in worn shoes caused increased stance time and mechanic adaptations, but did not change force variables, suggesting that as shoe cushioning decreases, runners modify their patterns to maintain constant external loads. So we can pretty much dismiss this theory that once it loses its cushioning, it's going to increase your likelihood of injury because the runner will just change their mechanics slightly unconsciously and really gradually to maintain those external loads, which is really gradual. So as the shoe itself starts losing its sponginess, you start adapting to the shoe as well as the shoe adapting to you. Now that we've gone through those three guidelines and kind of my justification of why we shouldn't necessarily follow them, I've got three particular guidelines for you to follow in terms of when you should be replacing your shoes. Now, number one is to replace your shoes if they start becoming uncomfortable. And this is because is when they do become uncomfortable, you start changing how you run. You start you know, changing your foot placements. You start changing like how cautious you are on those shoes. And unlike that Kong study, which followed them making a slow, gradual change as the cushioning sort of lessens, this would be a, a quite instant, like across weeks instead of six to 12 months over a couple of weeks, you'd be like, oh, these are really uncomfortable and you're sort of starting to change your mechanics. That's sort of an abrupt change. Number two is along the same guidelines as if you're rapidly changing your biomechanics. So it might not be comfort that changes your biomechanics. It might be some sort of foot placement or some sort of control issues or stability issues that are rapidly changing because the shoe itself is getting too old. Um, you can talk about holes in a shoe. You can talk about really aggressive kind of wear through the sides that can kind of create like an angle through the heel and cause you to rock and roll a little bit differently than what you might have. Number three follows a very similar line and it is um, to replace your shoes if there's significant wear and tear. Now I'm not talking about like a, a slight sort of wear or like um, faded patterns on the sole. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about significant wear and tear. Now, I told you that I've just recently um, bought two pairs of shoes, and this is because these running shoes that I have now have a, a hole in the side. I have my other running shoes, which were mainly the bulk of what I was doing. Again, has a hole poking out the side. And my favorite Innovate shoes, the ones I've had for four years, I've had to put them on the sideline because they're starting to get a hole underneath the sole here. So like I say, significant wear and tear would usually warrant changing these shoes, which is why I've sort of decided to replace them. Okay, Run Smiler Scholars, now it's time for me to hear from you. Comment below, how long do you usually take before you replace your running shoes and what sort of guidelines do you follow? Love to hear from you. I know the channel's starting to get a little bit bigger, so hopefully we can see some comments come in because I'd love to hear from you. If you've liked or learned anything from this video, hit like. If you haven't done so already, hit subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and hopefully it's building upon your running IQ.